London and East Coast fam. So sorry, but you know, I'm on West Coast time. It's still pretty early to me. I'm currently making dinner. That's how early it is still to me. So I'm sorry. Uh, but how are you guys all doing? Is this, is this like a first reality TV chat in a minute? I feel like it is. I feel like it is. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Blue Jay. Blue Jay said, hey, Miss Nikki Nikki. I hope all is well. Potomac Live. Uh, watching the Potomac Live. I truly wonder how that show will turn out. Me too. Having Ashley and Giselle seem like a dark energy duo. Uh, that the only th that the only thing that can come is mess. At least if it was Ashley and Robin, they would interact with the cast because I don't think that they would actually be around each other. With Candace barefoot and pregnant and Rob gone, I don't know, girl. Yeah. To be honest with you, I'm really concerned about how it's going to work out too. I listened a bit. Uh, to Andy's podcast, and he was talking about uh, Robin and Candace's exit, and it was really neutral. He was uh, saying that he uh, he thought it was cool that Robin was honest about being fired. Uh, he said that he was glad, you know, not glad, but, you know, like, um, happy for Candace. And then at the end, he was just like, hopefully we'll see Robin and Candace back. And I'm like, how does that work? <laughs> How does that work? It's just like he's really neutral in it, and I guess he just has to be. But it's just very weird to, like, fire somebody, then say, hope oh, you'll see them back. I mean, I know what happens in the Housewives universe. It's just really weird to, like, just, like, see, see their boss, essentially, talking about them both and knowing that he had a hand, not the full hand, because we know that he's no longer on the executive board like that because he, um, uh, on the executive board because he has watched What Happens Live, but it's just still weird as the interim, right, as the face of a boss on this show to just be like, I hope to see them both back when one, you didn't protect one of your employees and then you fired the other. It's weird. I don't know. 
I don't know how it works over there, but it's just a really, really weird. I honestly don't know what's going to happen with Potomac. This was a really terrible season. And I honestly think, and I know people are just like, oh, don't blame Monique. Um, not people. One person in the comments was just like, you can't blame Monique for what happened um, to the show. And I absolutely can, right? Because the fan base that came after that fight um, was just bloodthirsty. <laughs> demonic if we're just keeping it if we're keeping it honest it was just like a really dark energy that took over the show i'm not saying that there wasn't like shade and mess going on in the show that's a part of the job right but after that fight where that woman is running around trying to get to candace and saying that she's going to kill her the show changed and we just have to be very honest i don't know how they're going to fix it i really don't know it's very weird if you know, if I'm being honest with you, it's just very weird. I don't know what they're going to do over there. I hope it works out for the better because I thought it was a really good show and sad to see it go if it has to go that route. But you just don't know what's going on over there in the Bravo universe. And I also feel like a lot of people making decisions are people who were um, who lived through Jim Crow, you know, and um, the world is very different than the world that they experienced when they were a lot younger. And it's just like, I know, you know, you don't want to give over things, but it's like, I feel like a lot of decisions need to be giving, given over to younger executives at Bravo, more diverse executives uh, at Bravo. If they don't have them, you need to get them because uh, your audience is just changing and the world is shifting. You're not. So you're going to look like the problem if there's no growth. Hope it changes. It was a good show. It was a really good show. Hey, Miss Kaiser Shelze, how are you? Glad you're here. Hey, Sasha, how are you? Hey, Alex, thank you for being here. Happy Tuesday. Does it feel like a Tuesday? My God, today. Nisha said, hey, everyone, how, how is everyone? Hope everyone is doing well. So much is happening after the eclipse. I'm here for it. Is it so much is happening after the eclipse or so much is happening after Cat Williams? I feel like after that uh, interview that Cat Williams did with Shannon Sharp, the world just flipped upside down. Like it was giving COVID, right? It was giving the actor strike. He came in like a Tomb Raider and we have not been right ever since. Alex said, hey, Black Lavender, girl, neither am I. I feel like they should have gotten married. To, talking about Gary and Teresa, I agree. Nisha said, hey, everyone. Hope everyone is doing good. I'm so glad Crystal was going. Wow. Now Dorit needs to go. Jordan is jealous of Jasmine's life because she thinks that she was, ooh. Nisha, you coming in with some haymakers. What's up? Hey, hey Busala, how are you? That's an interesting perspective, though. I'll give you that. Yolanda said, hey, sir, fam. It's late night. I may be part of the replay, replay game, but I hope that Nikki... Uh, Talks about The Bachelor first. Actually, I am. So thank you for being here. Hey, Cammy, how are you? <laughs> Running the cackle. Hey, Megan, how are you? Did you see what April Golden Bachelor commented on the Teresa's post? Yikes. No, I did not. Share it with me. Share it with me. Uh, really? Share it, share it, share it with me, please. Share it with me, please. Uh, Sarah said, hey, Nikki, not the gold conventional couple getting divorced after three months after the televised wedding. Something is wrong with that model. It's not working. Hey, Brittany. Brittany said, hey, star family and beautiful Nikki. Thank you. Uh, Bravo's been wearing us out this week. It was a lot. That was a lot for them to do on a Monday. Somebody was just like, this Monday is Bravo's red wedding. It was feeling like that. Hey, Spency. Spency said, hey, Nikki and star fam, girl, this divorce is wild. Does Mama Star know the tea? She knows the tea. I, I gagged her when I told her. She was like, what? Because I told you, she's been booked and busy, so she has not had her ear through the streets like normal. She was gagged. Hey, always be good. Hey, makeup addict. Hey, Toya star. Lisa uh, Parker said, greetings, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It does not feel like a Tuesday. Brittany said, my Nana was the first one to tell me about Gary and Teresa in the morning. She was so excited. She was right about them not being a good fit. LOL. I said, what's wrong with you, ma'am? Remember, my mom was like, it's not going to work either. Listen, the mamas know. I, I do. I'm going to get it. Um, just John just said, uh, here just in time for my favorite family on YouTube. Oh, thank you for being here. Hey, Callie, Steve. <laughs> Angie is full of it. Hey, Double T. Hola. 
Nisha said, uh, just in time, I made a late night sandwich. Uh, I can't miss your lives. Um, I don't know. I, I, can't, I can't keep missing your lives. Keep them busy. Hey, Simply Simone. Drutzi said, I was thinking in depth about yesterday's Giselle and Robin conversation. Personally, I think Rob might still have been feeling immense guilt about losing all their money and probably saw Giselle as someone she could lean on for spiritual... You know what, Drewski, that is such a great perspective because I never even thought about uh, religion being something uh, that would draw her to her. Because I was just like, what is it about Giselle that has Robin like this? And I never even thought about her being a former first lady and um, that being some kind of mothering position for her during that time because she did, they did become friends around that time. Ah, oh, yikes. That's a good perspective. I never even thought about that. Uh, Miss T said, Chris won 8.5. Hmm, this could be interesting. It Listen, the Bravo was making the cuts, baby. Hey, Ajubi, how are you? Um, Sarah said, yes, a few of the ladies came out after divorce news, throwing little shady shots at Gary. What? Send it to me, please. Send it to me, please. Kali C, thank you so much for the super chat. Kali said, I think there's HR issues with Real Housewives of the Potomac. I think the show will be paused. I hope so. It really does need to be. It really does need to be. Thank you so much, Kali C. Hi, Shawanda. Hi, Lady Virgo. Hey, LB. Oh, God. Did we get the tarot person? <laughs> Lady Virgo said, why is Anna 8.5 going back and forth with a parody account? I knew that was a parody account. I was just like, there's no way that Crystal would say that. No, nah, like at the end of the day, Crystal, listen, she probably didn't show up much on the show, but Crystal got a real life and real money outside of this show. I would not see her tweeting like that and risking everything. DGF said, I felt the tone change to the relational aggression fostered by the green eyed bandits to break up a, a friendship and run Monique off the show. I agree. At the end of the day, though, I just have to put the fault uh, with Monique and Candace because I'm just like, you know, Giselle's not that smart. And I think, especially being an outsider looking in, it was very obvious who started all of that mess. But I'm like, if you watch it like I watched it, how did you both come out not like trying to fix your relationship? And I will give it to Candace. I felt like she was doing a lot, more than I would have done to try to repair a relationship. But if, I felt like if I were Monique, I would just be very very remorseful in doing the work that I needed to do to repair a friendship, especially with someone who I assaulted and the door of repairing that friendship was open. I didn't like how she handled it. Uh, Ryan Round said, hey everyone, uh, Mama, is Mama Star gonna join us to talk about the Golden Bachelor divorce? Y'all want Mama Star here? Hey Blair, how are you? Hey Shanti, thank you for being here. She she got two kids deep. Hold on one second, Toy, did your alarm go off? Cause I smell the chicken. Yeah, I don't want the sauce to burn. Oh my gosh. My sous chef. Is it okay? Just check and make sure it's not the chicken isn't sticking. Uh she got two kids. He said, I'm sorry I'm late. I was watching Lion Legion. What is that? <laughs> what is that? Oh, thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. No! Why did you use that? Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh, stay on your line. Don't drop the Hello, food. My oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh. 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 Megan, I got it. Oh, this is messy. What is happening here? The, uh, it's, it's so normal in church. <laughs> And so, oh, she has to give the ring back. Yikes. Oh, why? Because it's been three months. Mm -hmm. Teresa don't need it. She coined up. Blue Jay said, if the Bachelor and the Bachelorette is based only getting married and performing like you're falling in love and want to get married, it will always fail. I agree. Uh, Brittany said, they can just throw the show in the trash at this point. Old, young, nah, wrap it up. Remember when we thought that we would get results from older people? We got results, but man, not like this. Fusola, thank you for the super sticker. She got two D. She got two kids. Z said, "I have a feeling if Andy doesn't watch himself, he's going to go down this reunion. 
go down this reunion and and, and, and may may be ready for him to go. I think if he doesn't evolve, it might be time to give it to somebody um, who has, you know, or who gets it. Cameron said the Green Eye Bandits bond because they are bitter about the cars that they have been dealt in life. That's not supposed to be the pep, the preference suffrage. Um, misery loves company. I agree. I agree. Thank you, lovey. Thank you for being here. Oh, you're right on time. Uh, did the chicken burn? <laughs> no, it didn't. And it's delicious. Oh, she's eating it. Oh my God. Nikki, Nikki <laughs> Star is also a chef. Thank you, Toy Star. The chicken did not burn. DGF said, uh, <laughs> diabolic. Uh, Candace was unwilling to admit that a battery was placed in her back. Maybe she has now, so she may realize that Robin is Giselle's ace. Listen, I don't, oh, don't know. I don't know. It, it, it for me, it was just so weird that she was still trying to be friends with these people. But hey, not my life. Sarah said, about the chicken star family, don't miss nothing." Yes, and you know, also I have the gray pot holder right there. Nicole, no, 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 Nikki no. Star. The only reason why I'm saying that is because I don't want the sauce to stain that. Thank you. Go. That's my cute pot holder. Enjoy, my love. Sarah said, "I was gen I was genuinely shocked to see Zach and Katie still together. I'm like that one year contract expired. They must really like each other. Yeah, I. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? They live together, don't they? Blue Jay said, "Mama Star and the woman she is. I always wanted on the show. Her insight and constant learning is appreciated here. Oh, you guys Aww. are so sweet. Spitzy said, "I also saw that Teresa." says a, a part of the reason for divorce was because of her job. Uh, Sue, ooh, child. Well, she, don't she do security or something like that? Like, is she, she got a high up position, don't she? Isn't she like a, um, a local Nancy Pelosi? Susan said, Zach and Katie and Charity and Datoon still together, so now they've outstayed the gold folks. Ain't that crazy? And the gold folks had a wedding. Well, I will I will say this, Datoon and Charity, I feel like I'm responsible for that. Because I have sent prayers to the Lord. I said, God, this one got to be successful for reasons, Lord. This one got to work, Father. It has to work. All right, so the first, oh, did I get all my super chats? All right, so the first show that we are going to talk about is, of course, the Golden Bachelor, and because you guys requested, and because I think she has a great perspective, I'm going to bring up my heart, Mama Star. <laughs> hey, Mama! Can't hear you. Did you mute yourself, Mom? Got you. You got you guys don't know what I was doing on here with my mom before she got on here. Mom, I'm mute. What happened? We can't hear you. Yes. Wait. Speak. <clears throat> no. What, what? What? It's not me. The mic is on over here. Let me remove you. Speak. Oh my god. <laughs> no. Can y'all hear her? Cause I cannot hear her. Mom, go out and come back in. <clears throat> Use the same link. We were talking right before you got on here. I don't know what's going on. You don't have a... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Lord, Mama Star. <laughs> this is what I was doing before she got on here. And I'm just like, Mom, you've been on my channel before. Like, what is happening? <laughs> Why all these technical difficulties? We've done this before. Oh, Lord. Okay. She's back. Let's see. Can hey, you my... hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Wow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, Star family. <laughs> Thank you for being here, my love. Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I miss the Star family. And let me tell you one thing. I was back there going crazy when you guys were talking about... um. Uh, 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 Pot Potomac and Andy Cohen. You can talk about Potomac. Thank you. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you one thing. First of all, 
I don't even appreciate how he sits up there and uh I said like, told me you can't talk about Andy. <laughs> like one of the girls and no uh, mom well, they are cat can't. fighting. Mom, I said she could talk about Potomac, not Andy. Talk about Potomac. While they are catfighting, that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous, and I am not happy. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Giselle, Robin, she's on there saying she's fired. Yes, because she has been totally embarrassed by Juan, her husband. And she wants to go. Because she has been dragged so much. He has embarrassed her. I mean, I I mean, what is it? It's not the peen. It's okay. not that. Because he's given it all over Potomac and okay. everywhere else. Okay, let's move on to another housewife. She's, 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 just trying, she's trying to hold on to him because of those kids. Those kids know what the heck is going on. Why does she think those kids don't know? She needs to get rid of him, but she her self esteem and her self worth is in the in the tank. And um, Giselle, let me tell you one thing, Miss Cutie Patootie, that thinks she's so daggone cute. Y'all know I love this Giselle, but she has gotten so ugly. With now her I will say this: if you got beef with her, yes, she's been a mess. She has gotten so ugly with her behavior. And you know what? The problem is this: Shout kids are watching her. And I'm going to tell you something. That's not good when you see your attitude, your nasty ways come through your children. She better back it up. Because let me tell you one thing. Grace, Adore, and Angel, whatever their names is. Let me tell you one thing. When that stuff come back, it hurts a mother's heart. I'm a mother. I know. <laughs> so she better back up. She, she better, better back up. That. That's right. Because that do not look good. And let me tell you one thing. Grace. It's her mother and her father's child. Please. Okay. They don't want her to go to college and go away. Okay. Yeah. Because she's going to turn it out. She's going to okay. be on top of the bar. Okay. Yes, she is. All right. Let's move on to another house. Also, also, Candace, I'm glad she got off because she, she she's pregnant. She don't need that stress. She don't need that stress. And I wouldn't have been friends back with Giselle either because Giselle lied on her husband. Yeah. She lied on her husband and tried to make some sexual accusations against him. Mm -hmm. I would never be friends with her either. It's no making up mm -hmm. for a storyline that didn't go well. And instead of Giselle, well, I don't know how much you can make up because I don't know how much friends I would be back with her either. Yeah. After you just <laughs> said that about my husband because I done said, like, wait a minute. Because I'm looking at my husband, me and him arguing, you know, at, uh, when the show's not running, we arguing because I'm saying, well, did you really do that? And she's lying? Mm -hmm. Oh, please. But Robin needs to, um, you know, she needs this time off. She do. She needs this time away from them, and I wouldn't come back. He going to talk about she it may not be the last. Man, please, you ain't the end all be all, and you ain't nothing. But mom, it's a nice check, though. Yeah, it is a nice check, but what? Uh, but you're gonna give away your dignity for a nice check? You gonna well, spend it crying? A year? What's so those another year? But you're going to spend it crying, and your sons are older now, and they're looking at you. True. See, I, 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 for me, I, I look at the whole picture. My family is more important to me mm -hmm. than anything else. Like I don't understand how Giselle. You know what I mean? And one minute she crying, and I and my heart went out for her when her father passed away. Mm -hmm. But then the next minute she fighting the people. That I said, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Well, okay, uh, you have finally taken off your rose-colored glasses, and you have seen Giselle for who she is. So oh, I've been seeing Giselle, but she wasn't so um, mean and nasty. I've been seeing her, but she was good uh, TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. She was good TV and, you know, she thought she was cute and she, you know, she, uh, she lived it. You know what I mean? And that was, for, that was good for television. Mm -hmm. But now she done got mean and nasty. Yeah. I don't, I, agree. I don't I like the mean and nasty. Now, now when she was being cutie patootie and all that and all that, that's fine. Yeah. And her and Karen had their little cat fights back and forth because one thing for certain, the two things for sure. Karen could get with that Giselle. Good, she could. She could get with that Giselle. 
and if Giselle could get with her, but then they were back friends. You know what I mean? That was fine for me. But the nasty, yeah. I, I don't I, I I can't um stand with her with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um that's what I had to say about that. I'm glad that um and they done fired that other girl too that came up there with that voodoo stuff and this and that and that and this and this. <laughs> Not voodoo. She came on there with, and we don't know what it is, but it's something she called came, whatever it was for the culture. Yeah. She done no, cast a spell taboo. on them. It's taboo. She done cast taboo. a spell on them. They said you got to go. No, you got to go. Saying that about Wendy's mom, and that's why ever she like, brought on the they're show, they're not responsible for what Neca did. <laughs> they were just like, this is not our fight. They said, she did this. You go ahead on with all that that you done know, witch doctors and all that. Go. Yeah. And naked crying and all that. Cause she really wanted to be on this. She liked it, but she came with the wrong um wrong intentions. She should she should have came on the man, show to show us her life. They need to sign her to a 10-year contract. Cause <laughs> she <laughs> that man got more stories than the law law. <laughs> he got the man on there. He said he bipolar, he dementia, he all these things. Oh, Mom, he did not Listen, say dementia. He is all these things. He said, just keep me on the show. Just keep me on the show because he need a place to stay. He's been on here for and they done started filming in the studio apartment. I said, what? <laughs> me said, Listen, he don't have no more money. I'm gone. I'm, yeah. not, staying, I'm not staying in this studio. Now, y'all can say what y'all want to say. But I like the money. I'm running behind the money. See, really? um, what's his name? Simon, or is that Portia's husband? That's Portia. I don't know. Black. I think the guy's name is Black. No, um, her husband. No, Gordon. he is boyfriend. Uh, no, her husband. She said, see you, Gordon. Oh, yeah, Gordon. Yeah. And you can take these kids, too, if you <laughs> want them. Because I'm out. Listen, well, Portia Tyler, they done said she done tried to move back into the mansion. Look, I can't even get on that, but um, no, you're not. You came here to talk about the Golden Bachelor. I've given you five minutes, to but talk about you have that. worked me up with this Potomac. <laughs> I was sitting on there, I almost fell over in this daggone chair. I sit in the whole door and wait two minutes. Girl, Potomac is a mess, it's, Potomac, it's, but yeah. you know what? And they were one of the best shows they were with, with black people they had a high rating you know they were rich you know what i mean and then they done got so catty what is they that, that's a love of hip-hop now well the thing about it is they just they don't like each they other love and hip-hop okay mom don't do that you watch all of the love and hip-hop yes i do miami and atlanta did you see that Amara and uh, Safari got engaged? Girl, listen, and wait a minute, wait a minute. And then another girl that showed up and said that he was sleeping with her and he sent us something last night and this and that and that and this. Well, and Flo said this storyline. I hope it is. And Flo saying, Flo saying that she might be pregnant. I said, well, damn, you know, um, Safari. Wow. He's a mess. Safari. He's a mess. He loves he's him. Sling, he's pregnant. He's slinging it. He's slinging it all over Atlanta. He sure is. Lord Where have mercy. Isn't he in Miami? He from Miami to Atlanta, child. Uh, Miami, Atlanta, to Jamaica. Okay. Listen, straight. Okay. That's what he said. <laughs> okay, Mama Star. Um, before we get into the Golden Bachelor, I do want to say this. Um, you made a comment about Grace, and I mm. want to correct that comment. You said, uh, I appreciate everything that you said about a mother seeing things back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we, although that could be her story, you know, grace on top of a ball, you know, she's in college having fun. I, I, we wouldn't want that for her. So I wouldn't, um, I, I would love for you to retract that comment about grace on top of a bar. Okay, I retract that um, that statement of Grace on top of a bar, maybe a table. No, mom. Okay. Well, I retract that. You retract know, what? It I I don't want that for her or yes. um, Adore and um, Angel. I don't want that for yes uh, for Thank either you. one of them. I really, really don't. But my point for saying that, and I was just being funny with that. But my point for saying that is Giselle has to be careful. She's raising three young ladies. And mm -hmm. let me tell you one thing, those girls love their mother. Mm -hmm. And they watch everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, and kids often 
don't do what you tell them to do. They do what they see. True. They pattern after what they see. And I have three beautiful girls as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, I see things. <laughs> girl, girl, don't even. You got some good girl. Hey, none of your kids did what Melanie was doing back in the 90s. Don't, don't do that. Good I have some very good girls. Girl, and don't do that. Melanie was doing, I thank the Lord that he thank didn't blanket exactly. me with that. So I'm exactly. praying for Giselle too. Amen. To get the same kind of uh, grace. Amen. Okay, that Miss Melanie got. Because, honey, all that stuff I was doing, my God, today. Mm, yep, mm, mm, yep. Mm. Was that me? <laughs> Or was that Memorex? <laughs> what? Okay. Let's get into the Golden Bachelor. So um, recently, uh, Gary and Teresa uh, were on uh, Good Morning America, and they announced their divorce. This is what was said. Um... Uh, they made a joint statement and they said to everyone who has expressed love and support. Oh, wait, no, this is uh, Teresa's response. So I want to get what they said at uh, first. Uh, they uh, they both said, well, Gary said, and then Teresa chimed in. Uh, Teresa and I have had a number of heart to heart conversations and we've looked closely at our situation, our living situation and so forth. And we've kind of come to the conclusion mutually that it is probably Time for us to dissolve our marriage. Uh, they were sitting together holding hands and uh, Gary continued to, said, continued to say, as for what led to the divorce, uh, he vaguely noted that things that strikes me most in our conversation, it's between how dedicated both of us are to our families. I think both of us feel like it's best for the happiness of each of us to live apart. Gary insisted that he love, he still loves Teresa, adding, I still love this person. There's no doubt in my mind, I am still in love with her. I root for her every day. I don't think we can tell you how many people told us that it gave them so much hope. We want none of that to change for anybody. So after that, Teresa said on her own, um, in a separate statement, she said, to everyone who has expressed love, support, and kindness to me, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. You are all such wonderful human beings. It means the world to me that you took time out to reach out to me, whether in person, on the phone, by text, or by direct messages. You all are so kind to do so. For everyone else who is confused and angry and who does not understand, please try to find it in your heart to understand and try a little kindness, not just for me, but for the world and for everyone you encounter. And uh, then she put it up with this Dr. Seuss quote that says, don't cry because it's over, smile because it happened. happened. Oh, she's a sweetie. She's a sweetie. But then in the Instagram comments, thanks to Megan, April, who I always thought was going to either be picked by Gary or be the, um, or be the golden bachelorette, she says, I wish you the very best. I truly tried to tell you, but this was your lesson to experience. Much love. She tried to tell her what? She tried to tell her about Gary, I guess. Good for um, Teresa. Glad she got rid of the baggage. I will say, April, it seemed a little snarky. Of like course, if that was, that was, that was from a friend. jealous heart. Yeah, if that was your friend, you could have just inboxed her or texted her. No, that was from a that jealous heart. For everybody to see. That was from a jealous heart because yeah. she didn't get picked. But you know what, girl, Teresa, thank God you didn't get your money all involved with him and yeah. have to um, pay um, alimony to him and this and that and that and this. Good girl, you got a little bit of pain and um, you didn't feel like all that back and forth. You know, he didn't want to move to Jersey, and she's a little bossy with her money and it and things and things and things. Well, how and do you know she's bossy with her money? She's bossy, and she, um, you know, she had a good job, and she said, "Listen, come over here. I have the money. You don't have the money. I'm not going over there. I'm not quitting my job, moving all the way down into that broke down house that you had bought for your wife, your first wife. Mm -hmm. You could come over here with this house and, um." You know, I have money. Mm -hmm. I have a job. You'll be fine. 
you can see your grandkids. I'll fly them in. But you know, first of all, he want he want he want women to come in and out, but he ain't even um packing like that to have all these women. He's over what? 70 oh, and he's also um God. he can't get it up all the time because when he was having those overnights, he was having a little difficulties. What are you so, talking girl, about? Mom, no, we that's Gary go. Gary has this appointed me. And I'm glad that she didn't go 12 months. She went three months and Lord. said, go on. Going back to Indiana. In college. I'm going we're back to closer. Indiana. Indiana, here I come. He's back. What is happening? What? <laughs> um, I won't say that his uh his gentleman, his member, wasn't working. But what I will say is, it I wasn't. Okay, you've seen it. You see when he had them overnights. All right. Well, when he had them overnights, he said, um, with um, who was he with with the overnight and it didn't really work? Um, was it Leslie? It was Leslie, but I Yeah, and he um, was like, I had a little problem. Yeah, you okay. know, I had but didn't get okay. All right, all right. Um, I will say I think that I think they felt pressure from the network or from the show to get married because there just wasn't enough time for them to make this huge decision. You're, you're so sweet. No, I'm being honest. When they are huge parts of their families, right? They both have uh, grandchildren. Teresa has smaller grandchildren. I didn't see her moving, right? And Gary has his life set up. I didn't see him moving to help her. What you know, money do Gary got? You're talking about he got his life set up with what money? It, it seems like he has a, a nice little coin. And to be honest with you, from the, all the stuff that was coming out after the show, it seems like he was a little playboy in his town before he even got this show. So he had his... Mr. Funky Draws was not a oh. player. Okay. He just crushed a lot. Okay. <laughs> Well, they were saying that he, you know, he dated a lot of people or whatever. At the nursing home. Mom, he was not in a nursing home. That's he who he dated the from the nursing home. He was at the bar. He was living his best life. Why do you have all these suspicions about him? I mean, listen, from the way April was talking, it seems like you weren't wrong, but... You're so sweet, and you know, even when you're hard and you're trying to come down and say something down, you're still sweet. And I and 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 that's who you are, Nikki Star. But I just have to let you know the real deal. Okay. You know what I mean? This man, it, I I seen that it wasn't going to work. I knew he was going to pick her because she had money. He did, he did his he did his um work he did his investigation and he did his homework he found out who she was he said you know but he thought that she was passive mm. he thought that she was you know um i guess desperate or whatever and um she gave off a little bossiness when she wanted to get what she wanted to get because some of the ladies talked about that but um she got her head on straight and, you know, she probably been through a couple of men, you know what I mean? So she know, you know, she ain't as dumb as he probably thought she was mm -hmm. or as gullible. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean? Now, that and I can agree with because I what when we were reviewing the show, I was saying that she is acting like a pushover. So probably after the show, when they got into the real world and was living their real lives, mm -hmm. I think he realized in the real world he did not have as much control as he okay. had the show. Okay. Because Teresa's a boss. Yes, she is. And I think outside of the show, he saw what that really was. And, you know, listen, the honeymoon was over. They were in the real world and dealing with their real lives. And this was probably the reality of just like, you know, and what? she said, he listen, on the show, not in real life. Right. She said, how much money you got to this house that we're going to buy? And, and you know what I mean? You know, to, for me, I'm just going to say this. I don't think money is not everything. Mm -hmm. um, when you fall in love, you know, your partner may not have what you have or whatever, but love hides a multitude of faults. 
Mm-hmm. And um, when, when you love somebody, you deal with whatever, you know, come if that's what you want to deal with. And she was willing to deal with the fact that he didn't have as much money as she had. But, you know, um, you got to bring more than your package to um, oh your package God. that works some days and it don't work all the time. What is you your gotta bring with this more. man's penis? You got you to gotta bring more than that. And that's half working. So she said, you know what? Oh my go on. God. And go on. Okay. Let's see what the star family has to say. Uh, Miss Brown Sugar said, I was already concerned about the Golden Bachelorette's prospects because uh, men that age are not used to being flexible and the Bachelor stays recruiting the most vanilla conventional men. I agree. Uh, Brittany said he might have had more fun with Leslie for the three months, though. I agree, too. Leslie was fun. Leslie was an adventure. But I think if he would have picked Leslie and they would have had fun, like we've said, I think the relationship probably would have lasted longer. And then probably when they got together outside of the adventures, they would have saw that they were compatible. So what do you think? Yeah, I told y'all in the beginning that he was not ready for marriage. I agree. He was not ready. He was looking for some fun. And he had to make a choice. He was doing all that crying and all this and that and that and this. He was not ready. And he is at that age. He was not ready to start Mm -hmm. a new life somewhere else. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. When um, people are older, you know what I mean? They don't like to... um, um, pick up and move somewhere else because it takes away everything that they've built. Mm-hmm. His, that his kids are there in Indiana. His Everything that his, no, his friends are there. If he comes to New Jersey, he don't know nobody there but oh, her and her family. You know what I mean? And I, I'm being, I'm, I'm, I'm being, um, um, I'm serious now, you know, to pick a man at 70 something and bring him to a whole nother state and he don't have a life there. It's hard. And, you know, when he think about it, yeah, he'll take a a plane and fly there and spend the weekend or, you know, they can go, you know, on a vacation together and then they go back home because he has his life set up there Mm -hmm. and she has her life set up there and um, she's still working. She's not ready to um, stop working and move to him. It's a big, it's a big difference. Um, for people, a big adjustment for people of that age to, you know, change their life like that. You know what I mean? Because, you know, what the heck am I going to do? Well, see, that's the thing. Now, now that you brought that up, I think the golden bachelor is going, golden bachelor and the golden bachelorette is going to have an issue because you're going to bring people from all over who at this age are not ready to, uplift their life and start over. Yeah, they need I to change this you. They need to um the Golden Bachelor, they they need to give it make it a dating show or something like that. I agree. They don't need to try to make it a marriage show because um who's looking for love or something like that and change it from the bachelor to several couples and see how they involve in a relationship or something like that. But to try to get them married and they're not living in the same uh, yes. city or unless you find people we're um, in the same city that you find the bachelor in, yes. like they're going to have a problem trying to, um, match these people because although all those women say that they wanted to marry and all this and that are you are you know are they ready to move just like faith and uh leslie faith with the uh horse that she rides to the store you know she was not leaving um not the grandbabies not them yeah. grandbabies. and and leslie wasn't either like they were looking for you know a good time yeah spending some time they had you know failed relationships and they were looking for a good time they wouldn't have worked either mm-hmm. it's it it's it, it's not just only teresa they wouldn't have worked either because they have a life they've already established a life 
well, how where about they this? live. How about this? Can we do maybe if we do do it locally, right? That's what I was saying. Yeah. You have to find a bachelor um, and then you have to find local women. Mm -hmm. You cannot find women from all over the globe because that's not yeah. going to work. Yeah. So, um, Bachelor Nation, while you're listening, take something from me. You need to bring me into the writer's room to try to get, um, <laughs> yes! so we can try to um, hook this up right because yeah. it's not going to be a successful show. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Brown said, or maybe the Golden Bachelor and Bachelorettes need to be retired with grown grandkids. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? And I'm still I'm still set on they've established themselves in yeah. their um in their prospective cities or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of hard to find somebody that's really going to uproot their whole life yeah. and move that he's still crying over his dad on wife. <laughs> that bothered you. Yes, because I told you he was not looking for a wife. Yeah. He was looking for a roll in the hay. Somebody to go on vacation with. Or, yeah. You know what I mean? He was not looking for a wife. He was looking for a vacation companion. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shawanda says, I love the suggestion that producers make sure all people live in the same area for the Golden Bachelor and Bachelorette. I think that'll be, if, if you want marriage, I think that will be a much better success rate. Yeah. Than having these people who have established their lives and are set pick up and start over with somebody else who they only known for a few weeks. Yeah. Especially when you're older, you're a bit more apprehensive, right? You're right. not as many adventures. So I just don't think um, it would make sense. Me either. I, that will be successful. Yeah. Uh, just John said, if the bachelor was truly about relationships, they will concentrate uh, the contestants where the bachelor bachelor lives. They don't want that. They just want drama. It's a reality yeah, TV. Well, I'm not watching if they do all that again because it's not going to be. What is it going to be? Yes. A the roll is going to go down after this. Yeah. Yeah, because unfortunately, this was their success story. Yeah, yeah. The and ratings are going to go Nobody's going to all win. thought that with older people it was going to work, but it's like, yeah, that's that's not doing yeah. it. EGF said, Mama, you should pitch this show for Netflix. <laughs> They'll appreciate you over there, hopefully. Brittany said, I like that at their age, they didn't force it and understood it's okay to let go. They are free now yeah. to live the lives as they please and find their happiness in ways that they see fit after their marriages. I agree. Nikki, Nikki said, I'm 64 and I don't want to marry again, but dating, yes. I know that's right. <laughs> no, that's You better right. go ahead, Nikki, Nikki. Miss <laughs> Brown Sugar said, go on vacation and split all the bills. Let his exes tell it. I did see that, that the exes were saying he was very cheap, that he makes you pay. Listen, Teresa was probably like, I have a coin, but I'm not paying for everything. I want to be pampered too. That's yeah. what I deserve. All righty, mama, I'm going to move on. I'm going to talk about Real Housewives of Miami and Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Do you want to stay for those? I don't know if no, you... you know are. what? I'm going to go ahead on the leave, but I've been kicked out of better places. But, um, <laughs> no, I'm not kicking you know what you I out. Mean? Well, I'm Mama crazy. Star and this and that and that and this. No, I don't like that. No, okay. Well, since you're saying I'm kicking you out, I'm not. What I will do is I'll let you stay. And no, you can... I'm going to go ahead on because my basketball game is on, so I'm going to go ahead No, no, no. I'm not going to let you leave. Well, so I'm you're going to click off. No. I'm going to click off. <laughs> Mama, No. You can stay on. You no, are, you I don't want to talk about that. I Mom, you it. record all those other games. You can stay here. No, this is a playoffs, my love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm going to have to watch it again because I missed a lot of it. But um, I. you have any final words? That's what Toya Star said. Do you have any final words? Thank you, LaToya. Um, yes, this is how you tell somebody to go. You don't just kick them off and click them off. Toya Star. Yes, Toya Star. But yes, I do have some final words. What I will say is this. I love um, um, the Star family. And I love Nikki Star's show. And also, I wanted to say that, you know, um, Potomac, I love that show when it first came out. It was um, glitz. It was glamour. It was rich uh, people of color. And um, they had great respect. They did nice things. They went nice 
places and um they showed us in a different light and that's what i enjoyed about the show the cattiness and the fighting uh monique brought the fighting on and i don't know why they allowed the show to take a turn ashley um is one that um uh perpetuated that um pettiness as well too but the show um was upper echelon and that's what i loved about it and i don't even watch it like i usually i i may catch it here and there or something mm -hmm. But I used to wait for Potomac, and I don't anymore because of the cattiness. And then um, the fact that um, they uh, d um, treat Sharice like that. Like, she was one of the originals. Mm -hmm. How do you treat her like that? Because, you know, her husband um, that went on with another woman, so now you just really treat her like that. No. You're supposed to be uplifting that woman. So, you know, with my final thoughts is I just wish that, um, you know, um, whoever the writers are, that they would take the show in a different EPs. direction. EPs of the show and story producers. Yeah, would take it to a different, um, take it higher again. Take it, you know, try to make it... Um, because uh Karen is getting older and she need she don't need to be fighting with these people. Well, she, she needs to be, fight, she be fighting next season. That DUI. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to have to put on her gloves. She is going to be You know what? Bye, y'all. I can't. Well, I was trying to say something. I no, was very quickly, something. you have questions. Um, do you watch Summer House Martha's Vineyard? That's from Ryan. I, I have. Why, Ryan? You want me to? She wants you to stay on. But if you haven't watched, there's too much going on. You can oh, no, catch, not like catch that. Up and I'll bring you on uh, the next live. Okay, uh, I love you guys. Uh, Thank you so oh, much for having me, Nikki. No, you're Star trying to get off People are what? asking you questions, Mama. Oh, what? What else? Get it off. Who do you have on the playoffs? Like what? She think? Like, Golden State. What? Golden State. Golden State. Uh, this one was from Kayla. She wanted to know who 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 was in your um, Mama Star. We need your playoff bracket. My playoff bracket is Golden State. I can't go with nobody else. I'm mad that um, New Orleans lost against the Lakers. I want the Lakers to sit down. <laughs> okay. Final thoughts on Golden Bachelor, and I'll let you go. My final thoughts on Golden Bachelor is. Um, if they are smart for next season and I, I i i know of somebody that works on um the golden bachelor but if they're smart they would try to find some local um uh, people mm -hmm. to be um the bachelor uh uh to be the women that this person choose because you always have this problem mm -hmm. that you just had that um you know, they live two different lives because they're older people, older people. I'm not moving nowhere with no man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm not doing that because I, you know, you should have caught me when I was young, when I was able to do all that moving around. I'm not doing that now. So if you're not in my city. Don't press you. Don't press yeah, don't, don't, don't be in my DMs, period. Oh. All right. Oh, my God. Oh, Mama, I love you. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you soon for something else. I love you guys. Bye. Talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye, Star Family. Bye, Queen. <laughs> oh, gosh. Y'all wanted her back, and she's back. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Crystal. Guys. Bravo got rid of Crystal yesterday. Crazy, right? Let's see what she had to say. So I just wanted to share the news that I will not be um, coming back to film season 14 of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, it's very bittersweet. Never did I think I would have been asked to do the show in a million years, let alone film it for three seasons. Every single year I was asked back. 
I, it was a blessing. It was um, an honor. Uh, being the first Asian American on Beverly Hills uh, was a lot of weight on my shoulders that I have since just have really understood the magnitude of what that meant for people. And um, I just wanted to thank you guys for being such an incredible support for me. And I hope that I have been for you, sharing my story with my ED, sharing stories about my father and his Alzheimer's. Um, I've heard so many incredible stories from you guys. Um, but this is not goodbye. This is see you soon. I have some other things going on um, that I will be sharing with you soon um, that uh, I'll still be able to connect with you because at the end of the day, that has been my biggest gift of filming this show is connecting with so many of you with your beautiful stories. And um, look, my little New Year, Chinese <laughs> New Year, um, good luck charm for me. So more to come but i just i'm so grateful for everyone's love and support you guys are an incredible um audience um with your own unique stories to tell and i hope that you guys all one day have your opportunity and um rob max zoe my brother jeff um uh, my mom we're all so grateful to you guys this has been such a fun chapter lark <laughs> um so thank you guys so much again ah that's unfortunate this is what i will say um crystal i think so many of us was so excited right uh to not only have um someone who is asian on the show but also someone who has the wealth and like celebrity connections in beverly hills that we wanted to see unfortunately we got like a great chinese new year new year's dinner from crystal and like that was it you know what I mean? The fashions wasn't really given and that's okay, right? Um, we have come to accept that not everybody's a fashion girly on these shows, but it's just, I I wish she would have just came a little stronger, right? Um, I, I felt like she fell into the background a lot and we just, we were rooting for you and we just wanted something more. Like she would get activated, but she wouldn't stay there, right? She would stick up for herself one moment and then she would be crying or just like acting like she didn't care the next moment. And it was just like she had great moments. They just didn't last. And I think if those moments lasted, you know, I think she would have been asked back uh, the next season. But also she don't have no drama going on in her life. There's really nothing to cover, but, you know, a happy home. And that's another thing. Like if she wasn't activated personality wise, there needed to be something going on in her life. And it was just like, I think Bravo was just like, she doesn't have a story to tell that we want right now that we think is interesting. It really comes down to that. Like they really have to have an interesting story. And I just don't think that she was able to sell her story of what's going on in her life this year. Unfortunately, unfortunately, you don't have to have anything going wrong, right? You, it just needs to be interesting. And I just don't think her storyline this season uh, for where they wanted to take the show, what they wanted to do with the show would have fit. So, you know, they, you know, put her on pause. Uh, maybe we will see her back. Who knows? But at least she got that time, right? She got that time to shine. We just, I think also with her being the youngest, I think they just wanted like energy and fun. And I don't know. I just don't, I don't feel like she delivered fully. She had moments that we would get excited about, but I'm like, I think if if it was any other housewife, I don't think we would be fighting as much as we like and pulling for her as much as we are. She just didn't, she just didn't deliver when she needed to deliver. She had great moments, wonderful hair, great hair, a fabulous life, but for a TV show, it just didn't work. So, you know, Crystal, you're gonna do fine. You got you got great, you got great kids, great hair, a beautiful home, still have status, she will be fine. 
we may see her again. We may never see her again. But I will say, bravo. I'm I'm not for replacing a person of color with another with another person of color. However, this show does not need to go back to all white woman and one black girl. You know what I mean? Like, if we if if we're gonna keep Garcelle, then we need to get another Asian woman on that show or somebody within um, the Asian diaspora. And um, I feel like the person that needs to check right now, no shade, and will probably deliver, Kamora Lee Simmons. Anzi, get her on the line. Dial her up. That whole family is interesting. That, and mama need that check because Russell coming for everything. Get her on the line. Get her on the line. That would be a, she would be a great addition to the show. Garcelle, don't look for her to protect you. <laughs> like, don't, don't try to link up with the sister stuff with her. She is on an island by herself and she is hungry. I think that would be um, the best addition for that show. Um, it, and I, you know, if we're going to stay within the Asian diaspora, I would go uh, with her. What do you guys think? Let's get into it. Um, Sebastian said they need to let go of Dorit if they're going to let go of Crystal. I agree. I agree. I, Dorit has not been bringing anything for a very long time. A very long time. Uh, Miss Brown Sugar said, I get it, and yet I don't. I think Crystal brought a different energy that wasn't big and bold, but had impact when it matters. Meanwhile, Dorit, I agree. Uh, Drewski said she finally came as the Crystal she needed to the last season. Give her another one, Andy. I think they're just restructuring things over there. So I don't think we'll see her for a while. But that'll be good. She'll probably come in hungry and have more to talk about. Sebastian said they didn't show Crystal or Karen's birthday parties this year. Guys, Crystal don't have a messy life. So if you don't have a messy life, then you have to have a big personality. And she just didn't have a big personality. Uh, Ryan says, I didn't think her leather pants were ugly, Nikki. I Listen, I got to agree with something. I did not like the leather pants. Drewski said, Drewski said, ah, the Kim Fields problem. Too well adjusted, which equated to boring. Right. Like Kim Fields was just a really sweet person, had a really good life. And it was just like, you, you're going to have to get activated at some point. That's why Kenya was like, you know, Kenya was coming at her and it was like she was trying to get her activated in a way that just was not who she was. So it wasn't a good fit. Now, if the life was fabulous, nobody would care. But she just had a really, you know, chill life. And then when she came on camera, she was chill. That doesn't work for TV, for reality TV. Um, DGF says she wore some pretty little dresses, though. She did, but it wasn't like you never gagged, right? And I'm not saying that you have to, but this is a job. See, this is the thing. With a lot of the housewives, they get too comfortable. And it's just something fun that I do. This is work. You got to show up. You have to show up on the off season. You need to be working on your storyline. You need to be working on your hairstylist. You need to be working on your makeup artist. You need to be working on your fashion stylist for the timing of filming. Like you need to be working on all of those things. These ladies are just like, oh, okay, the camera's going to pick up and we're just going to film this. This is not a documentary, right? This is not a YouTube vlog. This is a TV show for entertainment. Ain't nothing educational about this. It has to be a job and you have to clock in. Uh, you can never be lax or chill on these shows. Um, and that was the problem. If she was high key messy, I think she would have kept her diamond. Carmen said, I really wanted my Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Destiny's Child. Will I ever get it, Garcelle and Sutton? We were pushing for that, right? We were pushing for that for seasons. Crystal just never arose to the occasion. I'm just like, girl, we keep on screaming at you for y'all three to link up and you just won't do it. Like everybody has been helping her. One thing I will say, Crystal has gotten a lot of grace. The fan base has been working with her and she just, she just wouldn't do it. I agree. I agree. Drewski said, yeah, per yeah, personality. She's a little regular and that's fine, but not good TV. Yeah, nothing wrong with her personality. It's just like for TV, you got it has to be elevated. Mama Star, I thought you were watching your game. Mama Star said, that's a shame uh, because she didn't have drama in her life. So they faced her out of the show. I agree. 
Um, me too. We need to find something that works and stick with it. And more interesting than the league. And that's a problem. Captain for creativity said Garcella and Sutton needed. Oh, we got that one. Um, she could have. But see, this is the thing, guys. A lot of women are offered that. A lot of them don't take it. I do think she was offered friend of and declined. It's embarrassing for some. Others say, okay, I'm, I'll do it. <laughs> Miss Brown Sugar said Crystal did seem way more fun via her Instagram post than we ever saw on the show. I agree. I agree. She will give us a show. She will give us a show. Drewski said she left in a decent position too. Didn't really embarrass herself and had a classy time. Absolutely did. CM said, now nah, we already have enough liars on the show. <laughs> That's Potomac. <laughs> Always be good. So they couldn't handle Kamora. I would like to see. I would like to see it. She would. She absolutely would. A great addition. Uh, Sebastian said Kiki Lee would give us a show. Also, Christian Chu from Bling Empire. Uh, Christine Chu, I absolutely agree. I don't know who Kiki Lee is. Let me look her up. Kiki Lee. Oh. <laughs> I don't think this is the key. This is not the key. I'm sorry. Um, I have to find a picture that's not a mess. Um, this is not Kiki Lee. Is this what you're talking about, Sebastian? Do I have the wrong person? The Kiki Lees are that are coming up. I don't know. Send me your information. <laughs> Is that who? If that's who you're talking about, absolutely not. Kayla said, "I'd be nervous to see the Simmons drama play out on TV. I just don't trust some housewives with serious topics." That's a good perspective, Danny. You think about that. I was just thinking about casting, but you're right. Um, I would be tuned the hell in. I wouldn't miss anything. I will be doing lives right after the, right after the episode because there's probably so much to talk about. Miss T said Crystal never recovered from the dark comment controversy. She didn't. Yeah, she didn't. Uh, Juicy said, question, Nikki. The only regular girl who worked for a long time was Cynthia. Why do you think that is? She managed to be mostly chill because the show had such great characters. That's the thing. Uh, a lot of these shows are trying to be Real Housewives of Atlanta, Jersey in the earlier seasons and Orange County in the earlier seasons. Uh, uh, New York, too, in the earlier seasons. There were so many characters on those shows. You needed a Cynthia to balance out the circus, if we're keeping it buck. Now everybody is a Cynthia. And it's like, no, 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 no. That just needs to be one character. Everybody else got to be bouncing off the wall the audience needs a perspective. Cynthia is the perspective. That was her character. She was always the audience perspective. But now these shows, it's just either everybody's an audience perspective or people just don't show up and it just doesn't work. Um, One to Mill 87 said they wanted uh, Regine Hunter, not Kim Fields, but that's the character. Yep. Uh, oh, thank you. Yes. 007 says, sent a cash app just because uh, you were you. I love you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the cash app. Let me heart it on here too. You're so sweet. Thank you. Um, Captain for Creativity said that awful bang -ang clip. And <laughs> I hated that bang. I hated that bang. Anne-Marie would have still been on the show if she wasn't so nasty. She had the spirit of Potomac. It was just like everything was so nasty and she was even nastier at the reunion. And it's like, we have to like you. This is your first season and you were just unlikable. It, it would be different if you came in, it was enjoyable and we wanted more of you and you were a breath of fresh air on a show that was getting dark. You came in and just hopped onto the darkness. It didn't work. After we have had seasons of Erica 
being terrible to the cast, being terrible to the fans, being terrible to the victims, then you come in and it's just like, let me just be terrible as well. Y'all need to know what the audience needs. And, uh, and again, at the end of the day, I can't put it on uh, the cast. I got to put it on production because you guys are creating the story for us. What Y'all need to clock in too. If we keep in a book, Nello said, Kyle can't dress to save her life. Crystal was fine in comparison. Kyle needs to thank her sister. That's the only reason why we still have Kyle on the show. The only reason. Um, DGF said, green secret mini gagged me once. I agree. It sure did. It gagged me too. Weren't we shocked? We were like, oh, okay. I even used that picture. From that green dress, because I, I thought that was the best she's ever dressed on the show. Ryan said her brother's love life was basically her storyline last season. Yeah, and the brother didn't want to participate in it. She would talk about it. We would see him in the scene, and when she would bring it up, he would deflect. It was like he don't want to have that. He didn't. He's not on Housewives, and he didn't want that story to be on there. Um. Oh, we do, and there's so many of them. There's so many of them. That's the thing. That would have been good too. That would have been good too, but they're going another way. So we will see. Bree Talks TV said, did we do Summer House uh, Martha's Vineyard yet? No, we did not. And we're going to get into it. Right after we talk about our girl, Alexia. So Alexia is uh, dealing with some issues right now because her husband has filed for divorce from her. Uh, let's get into it. Um... Hold on. Um, what's going on with my computer? Uh, Real Housewives of Miami stars uh, Alexia, can't pronounce the last name, I'm working on it. Husband Todd Napola filed to end their marriage on April 11th. Records filed in the Miami Dade court show the news comes after the couple denied financial troubles on season six of the Bravo series. Rumors, which at one point caused Alexia's co stars to wonder if the pair would split. Hours after the divorce filing, uh, news broke. Alexia addressed the matter on her Instagram stories saying, let's bring that up. I am shocked and heartbroken that Todd has chosen to dissolve our marriage. I will take comfort in the fact that my friends and family will be by my side, supporting me during this difficult time. I am praying for better times ahead. All I have to say is that uh, Adriana is going to have a field day. And I hate this, Alexia, but as soon as I saw this news, I immediately thought of that scene where Adriana was just like, I ran into your man and he told me that you guys were not doing well and that he was sick of you. Remember that? And Alexia was just like, she's lying. And Adriana was just like, no, that actually happened. And now I'm like, did it actually happen? Oh, my gosh. Bravo, you better put some money behind Miami because these girls deliver every season and the next season, this upcoming season, oh, we are going to eat. They are going to feed us because Adriana is going to be activated. Oh, when she got some tea on somebody, oh, she don't hold back. She does not hold back. This is unfortunate for Alexia. Um, Can you survive on your own? I feel so sorry for women like this, right? Because women like this have been supported, like, you know, like Lisa, right? They have been financially supported by men their entire lives. Like Lisa was, she started being financially supported by men when she was 16 years old. So they don't know a life outside of a man. And I'm like, Alexia, I think you can, especially with this Miami check, I feel like you can, you can hold your own. I don't think you need to jump into another marriage. These guys got married in 2021. It's a fresh 2024 and this man filed for divorce. Girl, let it go. Let him go. I think you can do it on your own. Like you don't, at, at, at your big age, you don't need to get married again. I feel like you, not saying that you can't get married at this age. I just feel like you've done it enough. Chill. Just exist in Miami and live your life. I don't feel like you need to do it again. Get a nice little boyfriend, move into a nice little condo with you and your son and just have a good time. Have a good time. This is not, maybe marriage is not the thing for you, right? Because I can't believe him of all people filed for divorce from you. Is it the son? I feel like that's a big task because he ain't never like that boy. He ain't never like that boy. 
poor thing, poor thing. I, I hope it, you know, hope you get something out of the settlement. If, if there's any money, because uh, uh, Adriana then told us he was he was having financial problems. That's all I got to say about that. What do you guys have to say? Um, and that's how we do. I didn't know that you watched that show, too. I asked if you wanted to stay up here. Uh, Mama Star said, well, she was acting like their marriage was almost perfect. <laughs> she was. Adriana be having the tea. I hate to say it. Because the way she be dropping people's business, I don't like it, but she be on it. She Her tea has not been stale once. Oh, ciao. Sebastian said, allegedly the lawyer who is representing Todd and this is the same who came to Alexia's. No. Are we sure? Because wasn't he like a property lawyer or something like that? And they were asking him questions out, out of his expertise. Oh, Dr. Nicole, get on the line. Dr. Nicole, get on the line. DGS said, utterly unlikable. Has, um, who was AM? Who are we talking about? Who are we talking about? Um, wait, what are y'all talking about in here? Uh, let me get this, because Blue Jay is leaving. Uh, Blue just said, I'm going to sign off, but do you think Mariah's plane ticket was already paid by production or Jasmine worth the ticket? Production bought it. Production bought it. Jasmine didn't do that. Um, um, DGF said, Nicole had her baby girl too, and Kiki is booked and busy on her Insta. This season is going to be good. This season is going to be good. Uh, Josie said, this makes me want to reanalyze when Larsa says she doesn't have a Todd. Alexia is probably thinking, neither do I. Sad. Where's the cocaine money? Josie said, Alexia had a bad picker. She chose a dealer, a closeted man, and now a bad business. Ain't that something? Just not, not good. Not good. Always be good set. Let's see how Alexia spins this narrative. If she is to woo. Oh, you know, she's going to, she's going to act like nothing is wrong. She's going to act like nothing is wrong. JS said off topic, but did y'all hear that the golden bachelor get, Oh, we talked about that. JS, where have you been? Scroll back. Uh, DGF said, at least he convinced Alexia to get Frankie more therapy to increase his independence. I do agree with that, but it seemed like, he just wanted responsive. He didn't want the responsibility of her son. That that's what it gave me. But I'm glad that she did listen to him to give the baby more. In, the, no, not the baby. It's a grown man. Her son more independence because that is something he definitely wanted. Oh, Anne Marie, thank you, thank you, TGF. Uh, stage four Indo uh, fighter day by day said, "Hey Nikki, so glad I stayed up to catch a live. Thank you so much for being here. Are they? Because she was recently walking around with an engagement ring." I can't with them. They're just so messy. They're just so messy. Uh, Josie said, I wonder if Marisol will team up with Adriana. Um, well, hold on. Let's see about that. Because I do have some tea on that. All righty. Thank you for bringing it up because I forgot I had this. <laughs> I forgot that I had this info. Thank you so much for bringing it up. So while that's going on, I'm going to answer this one. Miss Brown Sugar said, that's the thing. Adriana can be really messy, but at least she brings real sources, receipts, and uh, she's balanced out by the rest of the cast so it doesn't overwhelm the whole season. I agree. Listen, Adriana's a good cast member. They can't stand her, but my God, today, she, she be having the tea. She be having the tea. Uh, let's talk about this, and then we'll move on to Summer House. Um, Let me see if I can bring it up here. Hold on. Listen, say what you want about her, but her receipts, she be on it. I'm like, oh my goodness. Why is everybody telling you everybody's business? And it be accurate. Oh, she is going to have a 
filled day with this information. And then right after she tells all of Alexia's tea, she's going to be like, I want to be friends, though. I said that because I'm your friend. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't, Adriana. You are just messy. But she's good TV. Um, Hold on while, while uh, that's loading. Tashego said, I'm late to the live. Who do you think deserved to be given a pink slip first, Dorit or Crystal? Um, if we're going to go by impact, I think Crystal. Uh, Dorit absolutely should be next. She's just not giving anything. And I don't know what's going on with uh, that situation. But it's like, you, you got to be interesting. You got to have something that we want to see. You know, and Dorit just hasn't been delivering. DGF said, smash that like button. Please, guys, make sure you give your girl... Uh, the proper likes. It really helps me grow in the YouTube algorithm. This video is taking forever to upload. It's not even that long. Come on, StreamYard. Almost there. Almost there. We had 192. We almost, we had 206 at some point. So keep hitting that like button and help your girl out. Okay, now we're ready. Uh, recently, um, I didn't know that Marisol and Adriana, not, her, not Adriana, Chow, Alexia had a podcast. Bravo. Too many, too many of your stars have podcasts. It's enough. It's enough. I think we need to condense it to just one. And I think the housewives need to just focus on being on TV and not trying to be podcasters because if we have seen, you guys don't have the range. You guys do not have the range, but, um, Marisol did address what's happening with her girl, Alexia. Um, it's just me today, Marisol. I'm solo. Um, as you may or may not know, the news just broke that uh, Alexia's husband, Todd, has filed for divorce. Um, we're all a little shocked. And, and so, you know, it's not a good day for her to be here and participate. Um, what can I say? I'm, I'm completely taken by surprise. I mean, I didn't see this coming. It's, um, it, it rips my heart apart because I just, I can only put myself in her shoes and know how hard this must be for her. You know, that dream of, we all have that dream of being in love and then we, you know, find a partner and, and we have the fantasy of the perfect life and then reality hits sometimes. And it's not what we thought it was going to be. And, and today's, Today, we all got a big cold dose of reality. You know, it, things don't always turn out the way we planned. Um. That's unfortunate. That really, really is. Um, I don't know why he would just like throw that on her. Like, Alexia, we're going to have to talk about this. I, I hate to say it, but we just really are because it's just so bizarre that he would just do this out of the blue and like it just be such a shock to you like this is your husband what was got, what was happening there and i would like for you to talk about it here is why if you don't talk about it adriana absolutely will and she will not hold back anything i want you to get ahead of it get ahead of it sis um uh, let me get a few more comments and then we'll get in the summer house um which is so crazy he's a jordan so crazy to go by way of Larsa. Very weird. Juicy said, also, I know we aren't talking about Potomac, but I know you saw Candace spilling that production asked her to hold back. Yeah, unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And it doesn't help, you know, with accusations being made about, you know, how the show is handling this topic. It just, unfortunate. Uh, Captain for Creativity said, is Alexia... About to be the real housewife, Elizabeth Taylor, with all of her marriages. Listen, who knows? But word on the street is that Elizabeth was the one that got out of them. She ain't, she ain't um, a man. They never left Elizabeth. Elizabeth always left a man. Okay. Uh, let's get into Summer House. We're going to talk about both episodes briefly. Not a lot really happened, um, but some stuff did happen, and we're going to talk about it. Let's first get into episode three. Um, remember, right? Remember when I told y'all that they need to watch how they are talking about this Nick issue because the way they are talking about it is not 
the way I think it's actually happening. And what I mean is in the uh, beginning of episode three, Nick walks into uh, Jordan and Summer's room and he's just like, am I, am I making you guys uncomfortable? Am I a creep? And they're like, oh no, you're not a creep. You just get a little handsy when you get drunk, but don't, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It's okay. Don't do all that. And I'm just like, guys, y'all cannot say that when y'all sat in the car and was saying that he is touching you guys inappropriately. And y'all think he's doing that because he's drinking because he's unhappy in his relationship. Y'all left all of that out and was just making it seem like Preston was just having a conversation, just saying some stuff to be Bessie. When in the it, when at when in actuality, when Nick sees that, if you haven't seen it already, he's gonna be really disappointed because he sees you guys as real friends. That's what I say about these shows. Like, I don't care if y'all come on here and create drama and just make stuff up, just as long as your real friendship is intact. So that's why I was saying, just be careful about what you guys say about each other if you want these friendships to remain. Because I would not be shocked if Nick has an issue with how he was perceived on this show because of what you guys said and how you laid the foundation for the audience to think a certain way. You can't say all those things about him, then come back the, then the next episode, oh, it's not a big deal. Y'all made it a storyline. So what is the truth? You have to be more responsible with your platform if you want to save these friendships. If not, burn it down. Burn it down. But I felt bad for the dude. He was like walking around the house all sad. He was just like, am I weird? Am I creepy to people? And Chow. Author Rash wouldn't harm a fly. <laughs> um... So also in episode three, we get to see Shanice's mom and how Shanice, um, we also have a conversation where Shanice is interacting with her mother and letting her know about things that are going on um, in the home. I will say this, as somebody who has observed Shanice uh, on this show, when I saw her mom, I was just like, okay, okay, so much makes sense now. Also, mama's about that life. Mama was ready for violence. <laughs> Shanice was just telling her she was having some issues with her friend and her mom was like, beat her up. And I'm like, oh, hold on. <laughs> I think she just wants to work the relationship out. Why are you telling your daughter to cuss these people out and beat this girl up that she considers a really good friend? Like, Shanice, are you leaving out details? Because your mother is ready to roll up to Martha's Vineyard and start throwing haymakers. Let's tell the truth and shame the devil. They've been in this house for only a few days and it is already filthy. That's why for me... When I travel, I have to know people's cleanliness level. Cleanliness level. I need to know when you are vacationing, do you want to be living in, you know, do you want to be living in peace and luxury or do you want to be living in squalor? Let me know what you're doing so I can say yay or nay to the group trip. The rooms are filthy. The kitchen is filthy. The shared spaces are filthy. It's a few days. I, I don't care that you guys are trying to be, like exist in your real world, y'all are still on TV. At the end of the day, cameras is everywhere. I would at least try to try to tidy up the shared spaces. It's just so dirty. I'm like, how are y'all getting um horny in this place? Like, how are y'all trying to hook up in this filthy place? You're trying to make out on a couch and it's chips in your butt. Like, it just was so dirty. And I'm like, this isn't giving black excellence. <laughs> Let's give them black depression. Let's clean that place up. So production is trying their hardest to get Phil and Mariah back um, onto the show. Here is why. Phil and Mariah, hate them or love them, made a great impact last season. If you go back and look at the hashtag for Martha's uh, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, Phil and Mariah have taken over hashtag, especially when uh, their episodes premiered. They are, you know, interesting characters. They have a very interesting story. Mariah, if we keep in a buck, is relatable to a lot of people, especially with her story. And if we're also going to keep a buck, this was a show that was supposed to be about Jasmine and Mariah. And it became about Jasmine, Silas, Bria, her white sponsor. You know, it just became about other characters. And listen, that's just how it works out, especially in editing, right? But Mariah was a very interesting uh, character. And also the fan base did not like how she was treated, especially when it was found out that Amir was the, um, was the reason why the fallout even happened. And then how Maria, uh, how Amir gloated about 
this black woman being treated this way, it didn't go over well. So production is being smart and they want to get her back on there. And if, you know, we decide that we don't like her, it'll be on our own. And it won't be because of this uncomfortable incident that happened. So not only are they bringing her back because she's an interesting character, she did really well with the fan base, but they're also bringing her back to wash their hands of this Mariah situation, like Andy did with uh, NECA before she even spoke about the Osu stuff. He was just like, listen, the show don't is not responsible for this. We're washing our hands of that. So that's what uh, the producers of Summer House Month Vineyard is doing. It's just like, listen, we know that y'all didn't like how Mariah got out, got out of there. It, it, it didn't go well with the fan base. So we want to bring Mariah back. So if she happens to leave again, it won't be on us, right? We want it to be a situation where she just didn't fit not that she was pushed out because of an unfortunate event. Also, Phil did terrible with the cast. Great for ratings. Great. Everybody was talking. People weren't talking about that damn show, but everybody was talking about Phil. And if we're just talking in terms of TV, you need moments like that. You need characters like that. That will get a reaction out of people because even just the mention of Phil's name, we got reactions. We got filmable stuff like these guys are friends and it's all really cool and chill. Again, as we were talking about Crystal, we need something to happen. And so we need people who are going to make something happen. Right. Because you don't really have that. You have Bria, who's exhausting. That's it. Shanice just gets naked and cries. Jordan is very muted because she's insecure about her situation that is going on. Nick, he just stands there. He just stands there. Noelle, who I thought was a great addition, she just cries over Nick. So there's nobody getting it up and running. Preston is holding, is holding space and trying to be like the fun peacemaker because Preston did his homework, right? And he watched his last season and he came back and he was just like, this is a character that I want to be. And this is how I am going to move forward this season. And then I'll come back and see about the next season. Preston is somebody who, if you were not following him before the show, he is somebody who is very strategic, right? He is somebody who wanted to get in a media space or wanted to get in a popular media space for a while. He's been doing his research and he's been doing his homework. And I feel like he has done the right work. That is no shade, right? Um, he did the work that needed to be done. So he's not going to be, you know, um, this polarizing character. Even when we don't like what we do, what he does, we're going to love him. He's the lovable audience point of view. So you can't get reactions out of him like a Phil or, or, Mar or Mariah. That is why production is trying to bring them back because um, they're able to get stuff. They're able to get stuff going, and that's just how it is. And we keep, if we keep in a buck, the men like Mariah, um, and she's still friends with a lot of people in the group, just not Bria. Um, So anyway, there is a discussion about um, Phil and Mariah coming back. Everybody's good with Mariah. Nobody's good with Phil. Preston even has a moment. And um, I felt for him, right? Because it was very obvious last season how uncomfortable he was around Phil. And it was because of the way Phil talked to him and treated him. And also because Phil was triggering. And I think that Phil represented a lot of straight gay black men who made him feel uncomfortable with who he was in black spaces. So when the conversation comes up about Phil, he has a moment where he breaks down. He said, I hate being the only gay person in this house because nobody like hears me or understands my perspective. Unfortunately, he had this conversation with a mayor who was grilling. <laughs> And Amir was not listening. I'm like, this man is crying and pulling and pouring his heart out, and Amir is just flipping. <laughs> I'm like, poor Preston. And I also feel bad for him because the ladies rock with Preston unless they got it, unless he goes up against a straight male. And it shows me how male-centered the women are because a lot of people are trying to act like how he feels 
is not a, a real thing, right? And it's because a lot of them favor men. And I and I get what he's saying. I wish another uh, gay person was in the home. And I hope that they do that. I hope that we get another uh, gay guy. If not uh, his uh, fiance, a friend, he needs that uh, support. He needs an ally in the house. He absolutely does. Because he's the only one who is to be honest with you, vastly different from everyone else. They all have a lot of similarities, but Preston walks a very different path. Um, Bria getting mad about Mariah coming back, a person who she literally turned up on. <laughs> like, you were the reason why anything got as bad as it got. And thankfully for you, Amir... Let Mariah take the fall. But if everybody had known that it was not Mariah's fault, Mariah would have still been in the house. And you just do not want her there because Bria does not want someone there who is going to check her. Mariah is the only one that does not play with her. Preston is starting to get to that point, but Preston cannot check Bria the way she needs to be checked because at the end of the day, he's still a man and it's just not going to go over well, right? But a Mariah will put Bria in her place. And Bria don't like that because everybody else plays her game. Everybody else bows down to Bria. Not because they feel like she's right. They don't feel like her complaining. They don't feel like her being annoying. So everybody else will relinquish their happiness and their sanity over to Bria just so they can have peace. Everyone but Mariah. Mariah needs to be put back in that house. Um, It's so weird. Jordan trying to have this beef with Jasmine. Like, Jordan, it's it's just giving one-sided at this point. For whatever reason, you do not like Jasmine, and it's just uncomfortable to watch. No shade is given Giselle and Wendy, or Robin and Wendy. It's just like, as, as long as it opposes Jasmine, you will agree with it because you just don't like her. And instead of saying that, you'll just hop on any beef that somebody has with her or any issue that um, revolves around Jasmine. You'll hop on it and you'll magnify it because you don't like it. And it's just so hard to watch because then you have these scenes where you are understanding and feeling for her. And then you have another scene where you're just like, you were just being awful. Such a polarizing character. Such a polarizing character. Um, Preston, you ate with that Gordon Gartrell shirt. <laughs> Alex swears that he be eating these outfits up. You know whose outfits I really like? I really like Nick's because Nick will go from dressing like a sharecropper to... Um, a criminal on Miami Vice to a 1980s dad running a marathon. Like there are so many characters within his clothes. Nick is like stuck in the 90s at an HBCU pledging as a second year Kappa. Like, that's what I get from, like, his, his style of clothing. And it don't be hidden. But I think because he's conventionally attractive in his community and probably outside, he doesn't work as hard. And I wish he would work a bit harder. I wish he would work a bit harder. Also, when Preston said that Bria walks out so much, I'm hoping that the next place she walks back to is New York or Germany. Preston is sick of her. Sick of her, but he can't get with her like he wants to, but he is sick of Bria. He is the only one who sees it. He is the only one who sees it and calls it. We need Mariah because I feel like Preston and Mariah would be such a great team in the house. We need Mariah. Let's get into Noelle. She was such a great addition to this show. I'm going to give her grace because it's a new... Um, it's a new platform. You know, it's a new platform for us. It's probably her first time doing reality TV. But my God, today, girl, crying over Alex. You're too pretty for this. You got to stand up. You have to stand up. So there is a moment where at first Noelle was acting like she really didn't like Alex. She just thought that he was cute. She was flirting with one of Shanice's friends that came by. And she was just doing a summer house Martha's Vineyard thing, like having a good time in the Hamptons. 
or Martha's Vineyard, is that the, wherever it is, the black part. Anyway, all of a sudden I know where she just developed this, all these strong feelings for this man. And now she's like trying to claim him. Now she wants him to see her. She sits there at a club having a good time. She pulls him to the side and sits down with him. She's just like, you know that I'm interested in you. And you know, you know that I want you to like have fun, but also to recognize me. And Alex is just like, I just got out of a situation like this. I'm not trying to get back into it. And at first she seemed like she was okay. Then we get a shot of her in her room crying. And then she calls her mom and her mom was like, stop by there crying. Because can you like I'm with her mom like you've been here not even a week and you are crying over this guy. Something is not right. I do feel like because she mentioned issues with her father, abandonment issues with her father. I do feel like for women who do have those issues with their fathers, I do feel like a lot of times you become attracted to unavailable men, right? And I think the attraction to them is the fact that you think that catching an unavailable man can heal your inner trauma. For some reason, your brain makes you think that if you can catch this unavailable guy and make him like you and want to stay and want to be with you, you can do the same thing with your father. And babe, you need to get free heal deliverance of and of remove that mess from your brain, from your system, from your spirit, let it go. You cannot, you can't change your father. You cannot change Alice. If he don't want you move on, don't cry about it. I really don't think Noel likes him like that. I think she just fixated on him because of uh, the issues that she's dealing with, with her dad. I think it's absolutely that deep because there's no reason for her to be here with Alex. There's no reason. And then in her uh, confessional, she's crying and saying that she, she can never uh, be loved properly by a man. And I'm like, this ain't about him. This ain't about him because no shade. This brown skin Ken Dow with no personality does not have your mind like this. It is something you were dealing with internally and your trauma has fixated on this man. Girl, stand up, get free. Don't embarrass yourself no more. Listen to your mother and have a good time on Summer House. Have a good time on Summer House. Speaking of Alex, Alex being a church boy made so much sense. When he got himself dressed and got the whole cast ready to go to church, I knew exactly what I was dealing with. Oh, clock it. Stay far away from him, Noel. Stay far away from him. Um... Not really that important, but have you noticed that Milo and Bria not only look alike, they have the same walk? That is her baby. <laughs> Milo and Bria walk alike, have the same hairstyle, and look alike. It is so crazy seeing them together in the scene. I'm like, oh my God, twin, where have you been? That is her baby. Um, what I really love about this show is that it's a lot of things that are just normal for them or us because of culture that you will not see on like other shows like this. And this is why I like vacationing with ethnics, right? Because everybody like food for ethnics, for ethnic people, food is culture, right? So they're having this soul food Sunday feast and everybody is making something. Everybody is seasoning, you know, um, Amir is like, my meat got to cook for four hours. Bria is seasoning up her chicken. Everybody is bringing something to the table. It's a feast, right? And it's very normal for us because that is culture. But I just love that. And this happens a lot on Summer House. There's always some kind of event around food. That is culture. And I just love how it's just like not spoken about. It's just something that is done. But like, I like seeing it. Cause I'm just like, this is very true. This is very true. I was thinking about my friends. Like the last time we did a little vacation, everybody, we got meats and everything. And we're just seasoning and cooking and making this whole feast. And I'm like, this is just normal for us. <laughs> Food is culture. I absolutely love when they get to cooking um, on this show. Speaking of cooking, Soul Food Sunday. Amir's food that he's bringing is Philly cheesesteaks. 
He not from Philly and he is not Italian American. Why in the hell are you bringing Philly cheese steaks with no cheese to a soul food cookout? How did this black man get through life like being like just so unaware? It is so crazy because you look at a mirror and you're just like, oh, you got the black. You had to have had the black experience, but he just acts like. He don't know anything about black culture. And I'm like, even if you don't know anything about black culture, the way you look, you get the black experience. You can't be mistaken for anything else. It's so crazy. I'm like, everybody is making something. Amir is like, I'm making Philly cheese sticks with no cheese. Oh, he's growing on me. He's growing on me. Um, So let's get into them all at dinner. Uh, Nick Alex checks in on Jordan. He's just like, you've just been really calm, very chill. Jordan is going through a lot because of her hair. She already had a breakdown um, about her hair. Her and Summer have uh, been fighting and she just hasn't been having a good time. And again, guys, it's been like four days. My God, today, not even a week. When somebody on the show was like, oh, we haven't even been here a week. I'm like, what? Jesus. Anyway, so... Alex is just like, you know, you know, just checking in, just seeing how you're doing. And Jordan just, you know, tells uh, the whole table about her issues with her hair and, you know, um, uh, attraction, alopecia, and just what she's going through and how it's a black woman. You know, our hair is our glory and it's just taking a toll on her. And um, she's just dealing with a lot concerning her father and time. She was she's really, really opened up. Right. And we really had this sweet moment with her. And then Alex says, I wish you would have just shut up. And let everybody exist in that moment. Alex goes, oh, well, I've learned more about you at this table than I have in um, in my whole time of knowing you. And Jordan is crying and she goes, that's because you had my friend effed up. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> Jesus, what just happened? We were having this really sweet moment. And she's like, well, you couldn't get to know me because of what you did to Shanice. And Shanice, she, she looks and she's just like, you, do you, uh, you traumatize me. And what she's saying that he traumatized her about was telling, bringing to the home that, or to the show that she was, um, that she, you know, lost her job and everything because she was stalking um, her boyfriend. And she was like, now in time, anybody Googles my name, that comes up. Now I'll give it to her. Something like that is absolutely traumatizing, right? Um, that's why I said they just need to be careful of what they bring to the show because you might think it's innocent, but you can't control the narrative once you put it out there for strangers to dissect. So I get where she was coming from. I think she was just putting a little bit too much responsibility on Alex because had it not been uh, something that actually happened, he wouldn't have anything to talk about. So you have to take responsibility for that because you had already lost your job before that even came out, right? Like before it even got to the show, you were already in that situation. So Atlanta got me messed up. Atlanta got me messed up. I just saw something and I, it was my hair. I was about to flip this computer. <laughs> anyway, so I get where she was coming from, but I was just like, I don't think that this is all, I don't think every, I don't think that this being put on Alex, all of this being put on Alex is fair. And Alex agreed with that because he said, your boy Nick told me. And Nick is like, huh? <laughs> what? And then he's like, well, Jasmine brought <laughs> They were passing the buck like crazy. I will say it's very interesting how Bria, Jordan, and uh, Shanice are able to cause so much chaos with this cast and never be held accountable. But Jasmine is held to the fire for just breathing. It's just Jasmine, Mariah, Summer. Like there are girls who are just favorite in this home for whatever reason and they are protected. But then there are girls who are not. And it's just so crazy to see, especially with the men, because they will accept all of their abuse, but protect them. But won't do the same for Jasmine, Mariah or Summer. It's very weird. 
I don't know what it is. There's, I don't know how to call that, but it's just very, very weird how the house is just divided with these three protected women and then these three unprotected women. It's so crazy. Um, it's so crazy to see. So after, you know, Jordan and Alex uh, makes up and um, uh, Alex and Shanice make up, it's chill, right? It's a, it's a fun time. Everybody's going back to normal. And then Bree is just like, well, I feel some sort of way because uh, Jasmine brought up Mariah coming, but you already purchased her ticket. So even if we said that we didn't want her to come, she was already coming. And I'm going to just say this. I don't want her to come. And Jasmine is just like, I'm so sick of this. She's tired. She's also pregnant. Not not the, uh, not the cast fault. She didn't tell him. But she just don't feel like it. She's just like... Everybody said it was okay. Now you're not okay with it. Bria, you said it's okay. Invite her. Now it's like you're not okay with it. And I guess because the table wasn't on Bria's side, she starts screaming, don't invalidate my feelings. Don't invalidate my feelings. I'm going to go off in here. I'm going to go off in here. You better take me back to the home because if not, I'm going to go off. I don't like people invalidating my feelings. And she's standing there just screaming. And I'm like, Bria, we got to keep a buck. You can't fight. So what are you doing? What is all of this? Like you're whole, you do watch your tone, like all this stuff that you were doing. And you know, if somebody even plucks your forehead, you're flipping over. So what is all this stuff that you are doing? The mouth is too slick for you to be out there doing all of this. It's no shade. It's giving Candace in the early days. <laughs> Candace was just like, the mouth was slick. I will give it to Candace. That mouth got slick when people pressed her. That's why I always gave homegirl a pass because I'm just like, Candace would have never talked to you crazy had you never, have you never not come for her. You don't have to come for Bria. Bria just, she just, I, I don't know. I'm like, what are you doing all this? And why are you acting like this when you know you're not about that life? Even Preston was just like, you keep on acting like you're hood. It's not. Like, that's just not your existence. So why are you even doing all this? Why are you causing all this chaos? Why are you trying to get into it with people? And then right after, you want to hug and be friends. Like, uh, Jasmine starts crying because she just gets overwhelmed. She's also pregnant. Now, Bria want to hug her. And I'm just like, but you were the one who put her in this position. Now you want to hug her and be her friend? How are you guys friends with this girl? I am so confused because we just have a glimpse of her personality on this show. And my God, today, it is a lot. It is draining. How did you guys become friends? Because she just pops off for no reason and just poisons whatever environment that she's in. Like every time Bria goes off, everybody goes, Ugh. like, it's traumatizing. If you want to talk about traumatizing Shanice, Bria traumatizes the cast and they keep her around because they like Milo. It's crazy how Bria Jordan is just able to cuss these people out and they apologize. <laughs> but Mariah had to leave. It's giving classism. Uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I feel bad for Preston because he's the only one that clocks Bria's mess and nobody has his back. And so he just, there's not much he can do. It's really, really unfortunate, but we need Mariah back because she going to put Bria in her place. Bria not going to do all that. Bria going to pop off with Mariah as long as there are people there to hold her back so she can act fake tough. Girl, I knew you grew up in the suburbs. There's no way. There's no way you could do all that stuff to people. <laughs> there's no way. You, you do all that. See, Bria to me gives the kind of black person who puts on, no shade, Bria gives Drake, where it's like, you do all this stuff in, in spaces where none of us are at, right? You can act tough like that to them white girls from Orange County, because they'll believe that and they'll fear you. But you can't do that to them sisters from Philly. But you can do that with them Jack and Jill blacks. 
but you can't do that with them Sugar Hill Blacks. <laughs> like, you can't do that with the Marcy Hill Project Blacks, but them Jackie Jill ones, them Druid Hill Blacks, them Baldwin Hill Blacks, you can play them games. You can play them games. See, you know, I, you know what, Bria, I'm going to give it to you. You know what spaces to play in. I'll give it to you. That's all I want to say. What do you guys have to say? Let's get into it. Um, Juicy said, also, I know we're going to talk. Oh, I got that one. Um, Nisha said, Bria said on Kempire's live chats last, uh, last, during last season, uh, Bree says she was okay with Mariah coming back. No problem with her. Now it's an issue. So it could just be storyline. It could just be storyline. Um, Nisha also said Shanice, um, her ex, leaking her pics, not okay. But if she is in, in a legal battle, he can use what she said. She's sending news to other men against her. I hope it makes sense. I like her. I like Shanice too. I really, really do. Um, she is... She's so glad she's protected in that home. There's such a double standard. I'm telling you, half the stuff that Shanice does, the men can't do. <laughs> the way she, like, <laughs> just craziness. I'm like, Shanice is naked again. Like, didn't ask anybody if they wanted to see her coochie. She just took it out. I'm like, girl. Like, and everybody's just okay. With I'm like, this is crazy. Like, we're at dinner. Why is your coochie out? Y'all find this weird? It's, oh, my God. Uh, same. They they didn't come off cool to me. Although Amira's growing on me, Bria is just, she's not growing. She's just like, oh, my God. You are just the embodiment of chaos. Everybody could be having a good time, and then here you go. And it's just with everyone. It's with everyone. When her boyfriend comes, she treats him the same way. And I'm like, what is going on? What happened? Were you nicer with the blue eye contacts? Put them back in. Put them black back in. This is crazy. Um, Georgia Pete said, I really wish Mariah was brought back. Um, her instead of Bria. I really do not like her and her bratty ways. It's just, it's so exhausting. And the whole cast is like, oh. Every time she goes off, everybody gets so uncomfortable and they start cringing. Um, uh, thank you, Micah. This is the thing. He wasn't a good guy, but he got them numbers jumping. He got them numbers jumping. Um, yeah, he is. He did his homework, which is what everybody should be doing, which is what everybody should be doing. Um I will say, I, I will agree with you a bit there, always be good. Always be good said, Jordan isn't happy with herself, but she's taking it out on everyone else. Misery loves company. Here's the thing. Jordan is going through a lot with her hair. And listen, as a black woman, remember, y'all remember when I was stressed out, I was losing my hair in clumps. Listen, as a black woman, that takes a toll on you. It really, really does. I ain't even going to hold you. I get it, but I feel like Jordan punishes everyone around her for what she's dealing with. And that's not fair. That's not fair. If these are your friends, even if you're going through something, you got to treat them well. Like, you know, you can have a moment, but then go back and try to fix it. She doesn't try to fix it. Everybody just apologizes to her. And maybe it's her community's fault, right? Same thing with Bria. It's like everybody just apologizes to her. And I'm like, you cannot apologize just to move forward. Lessons have to be learned. They need to know you can't talk to me or treat me that way and still have the benefits of my friendship. There needs to be some uh, boundaries here. And this cast don't have them. Um, oh, <laughs> Preston is so ready to get her out of there. He is done filming with that girl. Just John said, Jordan did not act up like that. That's what everybody is saying. I haven't watched Winter House, but on Twitter, everybody was just like, Oh, she was so kind and nice to everyone um, on Winter House. But in Summer House, she cussing everybody out. I wonder why. I wonder why. See what I'm saying? It's the Bria, the, the, the same thing that Bria does. You know your environment and who you can treat a certain way. Child. Hey, Will. Will said, I wonder if Summer House gets more views than Dubai. I feel like we, or I don't hear enough. 
I don't hear nothing on Dubai. But Bravo gets a cute check from that show. Listen, Dubai has to come in and save us. <laughs> Dubai has to come in and save us. Um, she just fixated on that man. Girl, don't do it. Don't do it. Um, yes, it's an acquired taste, but he puts it on. He puts it on. Alex, Gordon Gartrell. <laughs> NC said they created a monster when they let Bria have her way. Absolutely. Last year by kicking Mariah out of the house. And she's been running amok ever since. Jazz should never have gone against her bestie Mariah. Yup. And she's feeling it right now. She's making up with her friend and this is how she has to do it. But you also allow Bria to terrorize and have her way. So now Bria is freaking out because all of a sudden you're switching up. Jasmine, I'm sorry. That's that's a monster you created. Um when she was in that room crying, they had to call her mom. I'm so glad her mom was like, girl, get up. She was like, What are you doing? I just love you. What is happening? Um Listen, he absolutely is letting these ladies know. And I hate, I hate that I'm siding with the man, a straight man. But he's letting these ladies know what it is. He's letting these ladies know what it is. And I'm just like, men, I, we got to be honest here. I don't care how much clarity you have with the woman. You can't keep on having sex with a woman and say, oh, you know, it's just casual. <laughs> it might be casual in the beginning. But after a while, when it get casual and then it's casual and she making you breakfast and you still thinking it's casual, she's making sure you're comfortable checking in on you and to you it's just casual. At some point, Alex, you knew when it went from casual to a relationship with Summer. You knew. Um, his mom is white, his dad is black. Or his mom is, she's white on the census. She's something else. Um, no, you're right on time. Thank you for being here. Uh, Blue Jay said, I think production brought the ticket because I don't know if cast members bring whoever they want. Um, don't they need to sign NDAs, et cetera? But I like Mariah, so that's where I stand. Yeah, production absolutely brought the ticket. And then here's the thing with Bria. She don't want to talk about her boyfriend coming, but you want to shut down Mariah coming? And she's like, he's just staying for the weekend. Girl, uh-uh. You putting down your foot saying you don't want Mariah coming, but you but you can't talk to the cast about when your man is showing up. That's another thing with these black shows. Y'all, th these black Bravo shows get on my damn nerves because there's always a white person they have to entertain. It can never just be a black show. Y'all keep on trying to force a white character on these black shows. For what? But white people will still watch the show and be interested. There are some of them that can relate to black people as human beings. Stop that. That's the only reason why he's coming. If not, bring all the other um all the other white people the cast members is dating. This black excellence show, we know what that means. Preston probably the only one that dates black exclusively. <laughs> um Will said, Did y'all see the video of Andy going down to New York borough to push up on Amir's? on a mirror in West from Winter House. Oh, I'm not that deep into the Bravo trenches. <laughs> no. Jess John just said, when my friends and I do our girls trip, food is a priority. It's important as location. We hire a sister who is an amazing chef. Yes. Provide her a room and she makes our feast. Oh, yes. Come on, well, Come on. I love it. I love it. NC said, I think with Jordan, two things are true at the same time. She's going through it because of her alopecia and separate to that, she's a mean girl. Well, yeah, that's what I think was happening because you just, you, you just, you grieve for her. Your heart is so hurt. And then she does something and it's just like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> I liked you for like five minutes. It's absolutely classism. It's absolutely classism. And Jasmine doesn't want to acknowledge it because no shade, just like Candace, she wants to be accepted by a certain crowd. But Mariah know the real her. Like y'all were home and sleeping in a car together. Mariah know what's good and she does not need to be accepted by them people to exist. Jasmine wants to be accepted by the rich blacks. Um, Micah said, I've heard people compare Candace to Brie during her early seasons. I don't see it. Oh, I don't think it's a comparison like that. I'm talking about the mouth. They both got slick mouths. The difference is Candace don't get activated until you come for her. 
Three, oh my goodness, it's every time. No, it, you could be having a beautiful, wonderful day, and you could be like, the sky is green, uh, the sky is blue. We're, we're be like, I saw green. The sky is green. Watch your time. And it's just like, girl, what is wrong with you? What just happened? Why are we here? It's just, ooh, I couldn't do it. I would have been packing my bags. I would have been like, oh, ain't no show worth my mental state. <laughs> um, Kayla said, the men protect the women they are attracted to. I believe someone would have been in that protected group had she not like Alex hidden and quit it. You know what? You got a point. You got a point. Um, always be good. Said it's crazy how last season I couldn't stand Jasmine. And so far this I'm on her team and that's perfect. That that's what TV is. That's what's so crazy to me with these shows. When people become stands of a certain person, I'm just like, that is not where you need to be, right? Because you can't watch them fully because you are so biased by the fact that you like them, right? And so I'm even dealing with it now with the Real Housewives of Potomac. Like there are people who just love Robin and love Giselle and can't see them do any wrong. And like, can't be like, well, this is my girl, but I didn't like what she did. Like my mom, right? They just can't see it. Because they are so obsessed with these people, they can't see anything wrong with them. And that's the worst place to be in. You are supposed to watch this show, watch these characters, go on the journey. They will be polarizing. You will like them one episode. You will just like them the next episode. That is TV. That is entertainment. Watch the show and go on about your day. No. You watch the show, you go on their Instagram, you go on their Twitter, you're looking at everything about them, you're retweeting, you're writing, and you are becoming obsessed about a stranger, a stranger who is playing a character on a TV show. Let's get off of Twitter, close out the Instagram, and open a word of God. You need help. Um, <laughs> but that's what I was just saying, like, that's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be like, Bria, uh, you're supposed to be like, oh my goodness, I could not stand Jasmine. But this season, I really like it. It's the growth of a character. You're watching change. You're, you're watching her become a mom. Like you're watching her realize things. You're watching her repair her friendships. Like you are supposed to be feeling this way. If you were just like, well, Brie is my girl. Um, and, and what they did to her ain't right. And you're just in crazy town because you like this person. Let's get some help. Let's get some help. Um... Kayla said, Bria is good TV. I want her to work on her reads. And I think then when Mariah comes, it will give Nene versus Kim feuding. Here is, here is where you guys might be like, what, Nikki? I agree with Kayla. Bria is good TV. The problem is she is not produced properly. There's no production with Bria. Bria, Bria and that's the problem. She needs to be produced because she is just going out there. with. This is her personality, right? The personality is manageable if it's produced properly. It's not. She's just out there lashing out and nobody has pulled her to the side and said, listen, we have to see a growth, right? This character has to grow for the audience to want to go on this journey. We don't want to go on this journey if we're triggered, right? <laughs> like we want to go on this journey of growth with you if we know that it's a possibility. There's like, there's been no change. It's just one note annoyance. Who wants to watch that 24 seven? You literally are watching the cast have a good time. And then here comes the bad news bear ruining all the fun. Who feels like that every episode, especially after we have been traumatized by Potomac. Don't nobody feel like that. She needs to, if she can be produced properly, she'll eat on reality TV. Um, Georgia P said, I would never deal with someone like Bria. She tried to bring up that Mariah put her hands on her, but Summer did too. She goes to 10 without being provoked. That's what it is because she's not getting her way. It's very bratty and nasty. It just, it's not like, oh, you know, pouting and just, you know, I'm just going to go. Before you go, you set the, you set everything on fire. There's no, There's nowhere to go with her. That's the thing. There's nowhere to go with her. I feel like, unfortunately, she's shown all of her cards and that's it. Nobody's going to be invested in a character with no growth. 
NC says some something else I've noticed about Jordan is she doesn't keep that energy with everybody. Just the one she knows she can get away with talking down to. Classic mean girl. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Afidi said in my Sarah Jake's voice, girl, get up. Girl, get up. I'm right there with you. I love seeing Noelle in that bonnet and the shades is just a cute little moment. I love it. I like her. I want her to stand up and, you know, realize that she's that girl because no shade. <laughs> that brown skin Kendall is not it. Thank you. I breathe myself in our ballroom. Thank you for being here. Uh, Micah said in Real Housewives of Potomac, we had three white... Okay, we have a new person here tonight, Micah. Let's come on. Um, Georgia P said Amir's girlfriend is supposed to come also. Um, and she's white. <laughs> Listen, as long she gotta be on, she has to be on the same page as Bria's boyfriend, right? Bria's boyfriend came and he <laughs> the funniest thing about last season was that they were not happy about Bria's boyfriend coming. As soon as he showed up and he bought their happiness, they loved everything about him. She has to come on what uh, Bria's boyfriend is coming on. The only reason why I'm concerned is that Amir is talking about how jealous his girlfriend is. And then everybody is talking about how Amir's girlfriend doesn't like them. I don't think that that would be smart to bring her on this show that's about black excellence. And she's coming and fighting a black woman. Bravo, you have to understand the time. Not after any clips. Let's do better. Nello said, and I'm sick of bringing that dog everywhere. This needs to be the last season of Milo. You know what? I'm not even a dog person, but I like Milo now. <laughs> There's a growth with Milo. We like him. Nisha said, I woke up my animals laughing out loud with <laughs> that brief impression. The sky is green. Watch your toe. It's, it's, it's just so bananas. It's so bananas. I'm like, how do y'all film with this? I couldn't have done it. I could not have done it. Watching her is cringe. My stomach is so upset, like watching her. I'm just like, how are you guys able to survive 15 days in close proximity with this person? I could not do it. Like, OMG, every day you have a problem. You're mad about something every day. And some days it's multiple blowups. I, I will be out of there. Um, Georgia P said, yes, that's why I think it's not going to go well because of her drama just over the phone. Yet the way they are making it seem, I hope she comes in and is a girl's girl. If not, yikes. Hey, Coos Girly, thank you for being here. I see going to said people like Milo and Simon. That's the thing. Like Simon came in with gifts. It was just fun. So he was so much fun to the point that for me, I was just like, how are you and Bria together? <laughs> like, how does she attract you? Like, what made you stay? This is especially the way she was talking to that man. There is a problem on these Bravo shows with the way these women talk to these men. And again, I can't believe y'all got me defending straight men. But my God, today, the way Bria talks to him will put Decker neck to shame. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I was like, this poor guy, he's providing your whole life. And you treat him like garbage. Uh, um, they just don't like Bria. Her plus ones can stay. She can go. And that's a shame, right? You are a part of this cast. And everybody that you bring to the show, everybody likes but you, except for Phil. Bria and Phil, I can understand that friendship. Those two make a lot of sense. A match made in hell. Uh, Will said, petition to get rid of Truly Unoriginal and get Nikki Starr in Star Productions. Uh, only half joking. Listen, I'm telling you right now, if I produce these reality TV shows or if I was the production company, these shows would eat. <laughs> these shows would eat. I will be getting Real Housewives of Atlanta early day numbers. It won't be a game. Um, Micah said, I wonder how the season would have been if Silas was there. Glad he wasn't there. No shade. Me too. Sorry, Silas. They needed to have some fun. They needed to have some fun. And you need to do some reflecting like Preston did and come back with a different energy. Your energy, especially with the way Bria is, 
Oh my God, we we would have we would have lost it. Everybody would have like had their therapist on speed dial after watching this show. It would have been too much. You guys have to be likable. It's so crazy to me how everybody wants to be famous, everybody wants to be a star, everybody wants to get on TV, but nobody does the work. Nobody does their homework. Y'all don't realize y'all have to be likable. You you are working for us, the audience. We have to want to tune in. And then if it doesn't get another season, oh, y'all ain't support this black show. We were getting abused every freaking episode by Bria and y'all did nothing. Like, come on, give us some quality. Speaking of quality, I have a delicious baked chicken, chimichurri chicken with a nice pasta bechamel, uh, with a bechamel sauce mm -hmm. that I made uh, that I have to get to. I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me. Tomorrow, I think I might talk about Drag Race and that Ready to Love reunion. My God, today. Thank you all so much for joining me. This was fun. I'll see you soon for something else. Bye, Sam, and get some rest, East Coast people. My next live will be earlier tomorrow. I promise, I promise. Love y'all, bye. Oh.